Good afternoon, everyone. It's Friday. It's Friday afternoon in Sydney, the 22nd of December, only two days to Christmas. Uh, missed the Porsche vlog yesterday. Uh, I posted one about the Apple Watch, if you feel like watching it, it's here. But today we have another Porsche Christmas vlog. Let's get started. <music> So today we're going to talk about Porsche codes, Porsche naming, and cracking the code. Let's crack the Porsche code. I'm guessing a lot of you guys already know how to read the codes of Porsche or Porsche. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of you out there who are new to the brand who still don't really understand what all these names mean. What's a 964? What's a 993? What's a GTS? What's a Turbo? Well, Turbo is a pretty easy one, actually. Uh, what's a GT? All these codes, all these codes that Porsche use. Let's take a look at them now and... and see if we can decipher the code. I mean, let's be honest, the, the Porsche codes can be quite confusing if you're not used to them. Uh, you know, how can a 911 be called a 99, uh, 997? How can it be called a 996? And also at the same time be called a 991? It's a 911 or, or is it a 996? It is a 997 or is it a 991? Uh, it sounds quite simple if you know what it means, but if you don't know what it means, then it's quite complicated. I mean, the official brand name of Porsche started in... Uh, 1948 was it 48 or 49 with the 356 so the first legendary number to to start the Porsche code system uh, was uh, the 356 which came in uh, a B and C depending on the model year the um, the successor to the 356 uh, introduced the 900 code uh, I think the 900 code was used because it was at the time, it had to be compatible with Volkswagen. So they introduced 901 and 902. Uh, they had a bit of a problem with Peugeot, who was using the same numbers. So this changed to 912 and 914, uh, being the four-cylinder and the six-cylinder engine. I mean, the O in the, uh, in the Porsche 900 was easy to replace with the 1. Uh, so that's how that became the uh, 912 and the 914. I mean, as the Porsche range grew, more numbers were introduced. Uh, 924, 944, 928 of the 80s. Uh, so the 900 range grew quite quickly. I mean, all these, all these new models, uh, you know, started to make the 9 very, very important for Porsche and very important for, uh, for their model naming, which they continue to use today. I mean, even Porsche's pure racing models had to be uh, allocated a number. So like the 917, for example, uh, they all followed the, the Porsche code, the 9 code. I mean, Porsche also had to be flexible, you know, they were using up a lot of the code, the code numbers. So from 1968, when the 911 was re released in 1968, they started using lettering again, so they used the uh, so they used the A series 1968, the B series, the C series, and then the G series. Um, so you know there's flexibility in their coding, but they still stuck to the 911. Uh, special models like the 930 were given given the model number designation. I mean the completely redesigned 964 model was introduced in uh, was introduced in 1988, and then followed by the 993 in 1993, the 996 in 1998, and the 997 in 2004-2005, uh, all sticking to the Porsche uh, 9 numbering system. I mean even the original Boxster had the 9 number 986. Uh, as you know now, that's 718. Uh, the Cayenne also had a number, I think, of 955. Uh, the Carrera, the Carrera GT had an internal number of 980. So all following the nine code of Porsche's cult naming system. I mean, Porsche has been using one number for its cars since uh, since the 1930s. I mean, it goes all the way back to then when they started using the numbering system. Uh, they've kept it up today, which I think is a is a is a testament to the to their heritage. Uh, it wouldn't be Porsche without their, their coding system, their naming system, uh, etc. Uh, the other names that are included on Porsche, as you know, are things like GTS, which is Gran Turismo Sport, S, uh, which I think normally stands for Sport, RS, which is Ren Sport or Racing Sport, like the GT3 RS, uh, RSR, which is the, the pure racing version, not the street legal version. S stands for Super or for Sport, which is a more powerful version of the standard engine, like the Carrera S, which is normally in my car like a 997 and mine's at a 3.6 in the standard. The S is a 3.8 litre. Then you have Spider, which is open top and it's also a mid-engine sports car. The Tiger is an open version of the 911, characterised by its rollover protection bar behind the back seats. Turbo, meaning the engine has a turbocharger. Obviously all Porsches now have 
turbo based engines in the 991 range uh, but turbo is still a really important model for uh, Porsche uh, the turbo s for example the exclusive manufacturer one which is really really cool the 4 which means uh, Carrera 4 for example which is a uh, four-wheel drive uh, Carrera 4 is very popular in areas where there's lots of snow uh, gives you good traction uh, personally I prefer the 2 but the 4 is very very popular the, the 4 is always distinctive because it has the wider body uh, the wider body makes it uh, quite special. E-Hybrid, which is the new uh, naming system that Porsche use, which has an electric motor, also with a combustion engine. Uh, E-Hybrid e obviously is the way of the future and Porsche is developing that now with um, with new models. Carrera probably being the most, uh, most well known of all the naming uh, in the Porsche range. I mean, Carrera used to be used on the most powerful um, engine variants of um, Porsche that they used to do. Uh, but now it's basically become uh, synonymous with, with the Porsche 911 range. Uh, Carrera is uh, named after the Carrera, uh, Carrera race, Carrera Super America, I think it is, in Mexico, uh, which Porsche has uh, won previously. Uh, so Carrera is a very important name in Porsche and probably the most, uh, most well-known. Um, you know, not taking away from the other namings, but the Carrera is probably the most uh, synonymous with the Porsche brand. I mean, all of these models are the uh, current models. You've also got all the historic models as well. So let's just talk about a couple of those. In 1992, Porsche introduced the 1968 CS, the Club Sport. Club Sport was basically probably, in some people's minds, a, a less comfortable version of the 968, but it was also less the rear seats, less the air conditioning, and basically a faster version of the 968. You have the 924 GT, the 92 G4, no, sorry, the 924 GT of 1980 was uh, GT standing for Gran Turismo. 924 GT was basically a sportier version of the base 924. In 1988, you have the 911 uh, GT Cup, which is the racing version of the GT3. The SC or Super C uh, was introduced with the, uh, actually was the last, the last model of the 356. It was the end of the model range in the 356. Uh, this was brought back in the 911 in, in 1977. Uh, this was also intended to be the last 911 model. This was obviously not the case in the 911 Carrera 3.2 followed. Then there's the uh, Speedster, the 356 Speedster, 1953 or 54. So basically it's a lower windscreen uh, which gives it that distinct uh, Speedster look. And then you have the T, the 911 T which has just been reintroduced by Porsche. The 911 T is the T for touring model. The T is basically a less expensive uh, entry-level version to the 911 range. Uh, I did a video about the 911T here. The 911T is usually was uh, usually uh, in the original model a weaker variant engine of the uh, base model. With the new 911T they've tried to, I mean it's based on the base Carrera but they have actually tried to make it faster due to the removal of the rear seats, uh, you know things like that. As Porsche says, dreams are difficult to capture in words. Porsche's naming system is very complicated. If you're new to the brand and you're new to Porsche, you can look at the cars and they probably all look the same. Uh, my brother actually went to a thing here in uh, Australia when I was away and he filmed it for me and he couldn't even uh, identify which car was mine because to him he's not really, he doesn't really know much about Porsche so he doesn't actually see any differentiation. They basically all look the same. Some are older, some are newer, but that's, that's probably as far as it gets. Uh, the naming system can be very difficult. It is a Porsche code. It could be called a cult code. If you've cracked the code, then you're obviously a Porsche fan and, you're, and, and you know about the mark. I mean, really, the Porsche code is not that difficult. The more you read about the car, the more you read about the, about the brand, it all starts to make sense. And, you know, it's planned from the beginning. And I think that's what's great about Porsche. They continue, they keep, keep the heritage moving along the timeline and, and you know, I could do a video about Porsche DNA. There was a video I watched online the other day from Porsche about the Porsche DNA. Uh, it's a really interesting video. If you haven't watched it, you should do a search on YouTube and, and take a look. But the naming culture, the Porsche DNA, it all comes together to, to give us the experience that we all enjoy when we, when we, uh, drive, it, when we drive our 911s. Uh, or we drive our Boxsters, or we drive our Macans, or, or whatever Porsche we have. Um, anyway, that's it for today. Just a quick video. Uh, till next time. Bye. So that's number four of the Porsche Christmas Vlogs. I'm drifting.